welcome to a launch time politics with you live from our global headquarters here in the nation's commercial nerve center lagos i'm jeffrey who's on my here's what's coming up on the program president bola Tinubu joins muslim faithful for the eid prayers at dodon barra's grounds in lagos to mark the end of the holy month of ramadan in celebration of idel fitri One of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in Nigeria's history generates debate and controversy as former Vice President Atiku Bubaka insists the federal government must come clean on details of the 700-kilometer lagos Calabar Coastal Road project. And we examine the controversy surrounding the academic credentials of the Ondo State. Governor Lokia Edatiwa as the All Progressives Congress prepares for the April primary ahead of November poll. Again, in El Mubarak to all our Muslim brothers and sisters who join other faithful around the globe in celebrating Eid al Fitri, which marks the end of the fasting in the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is a time for spiritual reflection, praying, doing good deeds, and spending time with family and friends. The day is usually marked with prayers at Eid grounds with large congregations. Eid al Fitri is a time to visit friends and families, and it's traditional to wear new clothes and recite a short prayer called the Takbir on the way to the mosque, as well as eat something sweet like a date. Here in Nigeria, President Bola Tinubu has joined Muslim faithful at Dodan Barak's praying ground in Lagos to observe the Eid al-Fitri prayers. Some of the dignitaries that also observe the Eid al-Prayers, Eid prayers rather, with the president include the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Kaduri Hamzat, and the former Governor of the State, Mr. Babatine Fashal, among others. The Chief Imam of Lagos, Sheikh Suleiman Abdul Nala, in his message said the festivity promotes a culture of sacrifice, unity, and tolerance among Muslim faithful. On his part, President Bala Tinubu enjoined faithful to sustain uh, the lessons from the month of Ramadan and urged Nigerians to join hands in rebuilding the country. The kind of uh, resilience sacrifice, endurance that we have, we should preserve that for the country. Be kind and be cheerful giver. Love our country better than any other country. That's the only one that we have. And we must continue to pre protect the integrity of our government and leadership. The new hope is alive, well, and fine, and uh, Nigerians will continue to be very hopeful. Without hope, there's no salvation. Without hope, there's no development. Without hope, there's no life. And those are also our Muslim brothers and sisters of there being the eat prayers in the nation's capital, Abuja to also mark the end of the holy month of Ramadan as they join their other counterparts around the globe, just like in Lagos and across the country, to mark Idel Fitri. Idel Fitri means reoccurring happiness. It means reoccurring joy. And it comes at the end of the month of Ramadan, which means uh, the joy which we have, God has given to us during the month of Ramadan, we begin to practicalize this and enjoy it in a better way. And it's also a time that everything we have learned in the month of Ramadan, we learn to practicalize it, especially the compassion. If you notice so many people, they were happy during the month of Ramadan, they were happy here and there. And that is what we want to take out of the month of Ramadan. 
And then away from the celebrations with our Muslim brothers and sisters, the federal government has begun the construction of the 700-kilometer Lagos-Calabar Coastal Superhighway. However, for business and owners of the structures around the right-of-way, the proposed coastal highway will have been served with removal notice. It's a mixed emotion given its impact on their livelihood. Our correspondent, Kelly Agiga, tells us more. It's the construction of an iconic and monumental civil engineering project, the Lagos Calabar Coastal Superhighway. When completed, the 700 kilometer long coastal highway will enter the record books among iconic coastal routes like the Pacific Coastal Highway in the US and the Wild Atlantic Highway in Ireland. The first phase of 47.47 km starts from Amadu Bello Way, Victoria Island in Lagos, and the coastal road will pass through the Lekki Deep Seaport, Ogun, Ondo, Delta, Bayelsa, Rivers, Aquaibom, before culminating in Cross River. But that's not all. The superhighway, which is being built by high tech construction company, has five lanes on each side of the dual carriageway and a train track in the middle. And to avoid delays, the Minister of Works, Dave Umahi, has been up and about ensuring compliance with contractors. Mr. Umahi says the coastal road will, among other things, further integrate the north and south in terms of movement of people, goods and services. We are very confident that this project, 700 kilometers, and that if phase is true, it will be uh, uh, executed successfully under President Bola Ametinibu. But while the lagos Calabar Coastal Road will usher in a new era of ambitious infrastructural development projects in the country, vendors are the popular landmark beach resort site built to be pulled down are struggling to come to terms with the seven-day demolition notice we're given seven days to leave seven days to do what how what do you begin to pick up for for, for, for seven days and to where so if, if 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 it comes to you know to that where we have to leave i can't do anything i'd pack up my suitcases give up the flat give up the business and go back to the UK, which would be a shame because we're the ones who constantly sing the praises of this country, this place. We have really sprung to action. Kemi Oshinibi is the CEO of Landmark Kids Club. She tells me it's been terrifying the past one week. I have about almost 27 staff here um, with our total ecosystem that we support. It's almost 100 people. Um, and right now, everyone is feeling very uncertain. Everyone is feeling very scared. Um, and it's, it's really unfathomable right now. It's really, really, really upsetting. Very, very, very upsetting. But there is some sort of optimism from the CEO and founder of the Landmark Africa Group. Obviously, there's several conversations that are taking place. Um, I've had at all levels of governments, both state and federal, I've had incredibly positive feedback. Um, and some of the noises coming out of the government in terms of supporting businesses, supporting FDI, increasing tourism. There's a, both a commissioner for tourism and a minister for tourism for the first time in Nigeria at the same time. Tells you that there must be someone that's saying that we're serious about tourism here. Um, so the, I can't see how um, a collection of decisions will lead to the demolition of effectively the most impactful and largest tourist platform in West Africa. I'm standing a few meters away from the beach and the currents have been really strong so I cannot go any further. But take a look at the children, the family and friends and perhaps colleagues who have come here to unwind and get away from the business and hustle Lagos is known for. All of this could be torn apart any moment from now if the government goes ahead with the planned demolition.
but for the over 3,000 staff who work here and earn a living from this, their future hangs in the balance with the proposed plant demolition to make way for the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road. From the landmark beach area here in Lagos, Nigeria, Kelly Egiga, Channels Television News. It's been a controversial issue as much as it has been a very ambitious project. The former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has again challenged the President to disclose the full cost of that project. That's the Lagos Calabar Highway project. In a statement, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the last election wonders why the government released a sum of 1.06 trillion naira for the pilot phase or 6% of the project which begins at the Eco Atlantic and expected to terminate at the Lekki Deep Sea Port. It maintains that the federal government must come clean on the project by responding to questions such as, one, why is the project being funded by the federal government despite being a public-private partnership? Why is 1.06 trillion naira being spent on the pilot phase, which is just 47 kilometers? And how did the Tinubu administration get the design as well as the right of way in just seven months since it claims the past administrations of both former President Jonathan and Muhammadu Buhari never touched the project? In a reaction, the presidential spokesperson, our special advisor on information and strategy, Bayon Anuga, in a challenge, miss, challenge Mr. Atiku, Atiku Abubakar to get his facts right about the project. According to him, at no time did the administration of the former president of uh, former president Muhammad Buhari and Good Luck Jonathan award contracts for the construction of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway to any company at any varied or revised amount. He notes that the question of cost comparison does not arise, adding that the contract that was awarded was that of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Rail Design as part of the Standard Gauge National Rail Network. On his part, the Minister of Works, Mr. David Umayi, says the total cost and breakdown of the ongoing Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway project will be made public this Friday. A statement by the Minister, Media, Minister's Media Aid, Oji Uchenna, says the assurance is necessary against the background of the issues raised over the cost and bidding process of the 700 kilometer highway project by former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. According to the Minister, the analysis of the coastal road project figures as well as the economic importance of the project is a gross misinterpretation of the figures and a ploy to mislead Nigerians. So our attention will be on that particular road project, uh, the breakdown that will be coming out on Friday as promised by the minister. So 48 hours is all it takes to wait for that after the holidays. Meanwhile, the governorship aspirant and former member of the Ondo State House of Assembly, Mr. Lugbenga Edema, is asking the APC leadership not to nominate the incumbent governor, Mr. Loki Ayedatiwa, for the November 2024 elections to avoid losing the state. At a media briefing in Abuja, Mr. Edema, who petitioned the APC's national legal advisor, argues that Mr. Ayedatiwa's candidacy risks losing to the opposition parties due to an alleged certificate scandal. He asserts that he is trying to prevent what he considers a repeat of the party's misfortune in Bielsa State in 2019 when the Supreme Court nullified David Lyons' election over a certificate dispute with his deputy. Well, that is the focus of our conversation today, the issue of the certificate uh, 
a certificate, a, a scandal around the uh, Governor Yeda Tiwa. Uh, so let's bring this to context to everyone. I'm being joined in the program by a legal practitioner, Mr. Leke Oyeniro, who joins us via Zoom. Mr. Leke, thank you so much for coming on the program. Very well, good morning. Oh, sorry, good afternoon. All right, for the purpose of our audience, uh, before I come to my first question to you, let's just put this in context. So the issues under contention is the fact that uh, Mr. Adema is arguing that Governor Lucky Ayeda Tiwa had attended the Kosi High School in K2, which, according to him, was founded in 1980, but the governor says he obtained his certificate, YX certificate, in 1982, barely two years after the school was founded, while the school was accredited to conduct that exam in 1985. And there was also a release that was in circulation by uh, a, 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 a law firm that is um, Juryman Associates saying that they had a petition, the IGP over this issue, that a certain DIG was trying to tamper with the result or the reports uh, confirming that they were right in the allegation against the governor, which informed the first uh, PRO to, to make a release saying that they are not aware of any report in circulation. In fact, the person doesn't have a right to release such report. They will investigate. So I needed to put that in context for the prop for our audience to understand. So let me come to you, uh, uh, Mr. Leke, on this particular issue of uh, Mr. Ayeda Tua's uh, certificate. Uh, besides what I've said, what is, other, what is the major bone of contention here? OK. Um, well. Um, let me start with the fact that it betrays common sense to claim that we have graduated from um, a school in 1982 when that school was founded in 1980. So you just you graduated two years, just two years after the school was um, established. It betrays common sense. We all went through this process of secondary school system in Nigeria. And there is no way you could have joined the school in 1980 when it was established and expect to have graduated in 1982. So that is the basis of our petition. We wrote a petition to um, Office of the IGP requesting investigation on this matter. Like, please, come and help us investigate. And the team, the IGP team, made their own thorough and unbiased investigation, and they came to the conclusion that the certificate presented by Governor Ayer that he was, while he was contesting with his principal in, in 2020, that certificate is forged, it's fraudulent. That, that's a fact. We have, that, we have that report from the police saying that but, this certificate uh, is Ms. forged. Mr. Leke... Uh, just so that so that we we'll yes, put sir. everything in proper context, we're, we're just going to touch the issues as much as we can. The first PRO has come out to say that um, whatever is being laid claim to, as to this particular report that is said to be in circulation, the police is unaware. Let me read some of the things he said. We wish to clarify that the said document did not originate from the Nigeria Police Force. The alleged signatory, a deputy commissioner of police, does not have the authority to release such a report on behalf of the Force Criminal Investigation Department or any other such department. So I don't know what your response to this is. The police say they can't verify that the document is circulation uh, because you are saying, or your group is saying that they had done the forensic and they found out that, okay, truly, truly, allegedly, that it did not... It was forged. The certificate was forged, but it's an allegation. But the police is now saying from the first PRO that they're not aware of this uh, information being uh, sent out to the public. Well, um, if police... Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Leke. That is the issue from their own. And it is a certified true copy. It, 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 the the, the certification is on the, is on the document. For the fact that it is a public document and it is certified, it supersedes any other thing. It enjoys presumption of regularity. It's, it's a, a presumption of regularity. So okay. as at now... Go ahead, just land on your thoughts. So what I'm saying is that the disclaimer is not going to inv invalidate this document because this document is still valid as it is now. So or, or except they want to tell us that, oh, we've done a new investigation and we are coming to this conclusion. 
All right, the reason. Re- 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 all right, Mr. 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 Yeni Ron, the reason I. I, I, I my, my, my sincere apologies. I understand our uh, second guest has joined us, uh, Mr. Yeni Ron. Uh, we've been joined on the program by Mr. Alan Shore. He's also a legal practitioner. Mr. Shore, thank you for coming on the program. Mr. Shore, can you hear me? Yeah, good afternoon. I can hear you. I don't know whether you've uh, maybe heard a few things that were said by Mr. Oyenera and what your response will be concerning this certificate uh, scandal saga. All right, Mr. Yenero, let me, let me come back to you. The reason I kept uh, trying to interject to put it in proper perspective is that one of the lines of the police statement by the first PRO says the Nigeria police force is currently investigating the origin of the said document and the circumstances surrounding its circulation. We urge the public to exercise caution and refrain from spreading unverified information that could potentially tarnish the reputation of an individual or public officials. The challenge here is that the, uh, the place, the, the, the origin, permit me to say the originators or the people who are supposed to be the originators of that document are now coming to say that they can't verify its source. So how do you want to proceed from here? Before I get in, Mr. Shawore. Can I continue? Yes, please. That question is for you, Lekon. Leke. Okay. Basically, a house cannot be divided against itself and expect that it is stand. As at now, anything that the police is saying is an afterthought because there is already an information right there in the open. So the police cannot now turn around to say, oh, oh, that information is not from us. Well, if it is not from you, why was he certified? So there is already a political interest. We have to understand the nature of this case. There is a lot of political interest attached to this, to this matter, trying to drag the matter um, um, left and right. There was an investigation. Parties were invited. Parties were invoked. And they all represented the interest. They represented the interest of the people. They came to the fact. I, I, I lecture in um, Caleb University, so I always drive through that um, uh, Ecosi uh, High School road. You will see it right at the entrance of the school, that the school was founded in 1980. So beyond police investigation, it is a matter of common sense. So... I believe that whatever it is that police is saying now is an afterthought to cover up for the political big weights involved. Which is, which is why I'm asking that, what is the next line of action for your group, given what is playing out right now? Because the, in, on April the 20th, just hold on. They are bor- because one is wondering, the aborigines, the elders of the APC in Ondo State, one of the strong stakeholders of the party, had come out to endorse Mr. Lokia Yedatiwa ahead of Wale Akintenewa and Olushala Oke, SAN. And one of the criteria, I, I, I had one of the aborigines right here on the show on politics today, and he said that they looked at academic credentials, financial strength, right of refusal, and all of that. In fact, the first thing he mentioned was academic credential of the individuals. All of them, 10 of them that was thrown down to three, and finally Lokia Yedatiwa, the governor, was picked. So how could they have missed a basic information as to as, as simple as this, according to your allegation? Well, matter of endorsement is um, purely political, which um, I don't want us to bring politics into the credibility of the governor or, 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 and the, this document that um, we are relying on from the police. As it is, anybody can endorse anybody. It is, it is just normal. It's a political season in on those state. So um, even if someone has um, 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 obtained PhD, they can see, somebody can sit on around and say, oh, I prefer the man with secondary school certificate over this man with PhD because I believe that he can do this, he can do that. So that's, that's very normal. It's a political season. But what we have to understand is that the fact is, this matter is a matter of rest is part of the It's a fact that speaks for itself. And documentary evidence even speaks for itself. There's documentary evidence telling us that Mr. that you are forged his certificate. Beyond that, it is a matter of common sense to see that a school cannot be established in 1980 and um, conduct external examination in 1982. It has to be in 1985. That is the headless at which they can 
conduct external examination. So, all right. um, any so, endorsement anybody is doing is, is totally fine. I'm not interested in becoming governor who is not all right. governor. But all right, all right, Mr. 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 Yenero. <laughs> Mr. Yes, Inero, just hold on. Let, let's, let's, I understand Mr. Shore has joined us. We, we're almost totally out of time. I don't know how much time I can take with Mr. Shore. Uh, Mr. Shore, thank you for joining us. Are you there? Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, it's a hefty allegation. They say the governor forged his certificate as straight as that is allegedly that the school was founded in 1980, got his certific certificate in 1982. How did that happen? And this may become a subject of litigation. Mr. Yenero has been speaking about this. I want your response in maybe about a minute because of time. Yes, um, thank you for having me. It's sad when you see a lawyer who is not a court, who is pronouncing uh, an allegation of, of this magnitude and is uh, concluding that somebody forge, you know, is, is very sad. And I'm very sure some of these lawyers we have their this in the court. In the first instance, the Nigerian justice system does not allow a conclusion, even not even the um, investigation authority like the police, the DSS, to conclude that uh, an offense has been has been committed. So when you see lawyers who come to uh, national television to pronounce on an allegation that is unfounded, reckless, unsubstantiated. It, it, it's sad. All right, all right, all right Mr. Shore, we do not have the luxury of time. I did say that because uh, apologies for what uh, technology has done to your connection. But a quick one. Um, the facts are, the argument about is a fact. When did the governor uh, graduate from Ikosi High School? When was Ikosi High School founded? Just a simple, straight question. Yeah, this is no issue. I can tell you a personal experience. No, no, no. I, we don't I have the luxury of time. I like asked a straight question. I don't have so much time. My sincere uh, apologies. Hello. When did he graduate? When was the school founded? Because of time. Straight answers, please. Hello? Mr. Shore, can you hear me? The network is terrible. Can you hear me, Mr. Shore? I can hear you now. I said, we don't have time. I barely have 30 seconds. That's why I needed to just answer straight. When did the governor graduate from Ikosi High School and when was Ikosi High School founded? Just let's have that fact and close the show. I can't, I can't give you a straight answer without building the foundation of what happened at that particular period. Of time, and I was trying to let you know from my own personal background that oh. I went to Adekunle Ajasi University. Hello. All right, Mr. Shore, uh, we're totally out of time. My, my sincere apologies. Maybe we have to reschedule this conversation so that we'll have the latitude to uh, talk over this and debate over the issue. Both of you, Lek Lek your own legal practitioner as well as Alan Shore, also a legal practitioner. Thank you both for coming on the program. And that's it on Lunch and Politics. Thank you for your time. And of course, your usual company. I'm Jeffrey Uzonga. You've been served on Lunchtime. Happy holidays today and tomorrow. <laughs>